It's over. The LA Galaxy know they are the champions of the West. Next weekend, heading to MLS Cup in Frisco, Texas. Tenth year Major League Soccer in LA Galaxy. Five MLS Cup finals now. MLS continued its steady expansion into its 10th season. New teams and new stadiums were now being announced each year. The latest jewel in the MLS crown was Pizza Hut Park in Frisco, Texas, a brand new world-class stadium built specifically for soccer that would create an experience that both fans and players would never forget. I think it was a great atmosphere for the final. Something that's needed in soccer, you know, to have those stadiums like that. I think the proudest moment I've had was sitting in this gorgeous new stadium in Frisco and thinking, how could I ever have imagined I'd be playing in an MLS Cup in a stadium like that full of people in, in America? Never. The 2005 Cup would be the stadium's network television debut and the stage for another New England-Los Angeles matchup. This would be the second time these clubs had met in an MLS Cup in just three years. Galaxy and Rev fans converged on Frisco from opposite coasts for the showdown of the Lone Star State. I never used to understand how important fans were, but you realize how much they love it. That final had a lot of New England fans, a lot of Galaxy fans, and then a lot of just sports fans, a lot of soccer fans, and it turned out to be an awesome day. After a rocky regular season run and just barely making the playoffs, the Galaxy had turned it on in the postseason and made their march all the way to the finals. Despite their underdog status, LA remained fearless and focused. The difference between this game and the one in 2002, New England, Eric, the favorite today, they were the underdogs in 2002. Because of their aggressive style, and they expect that right off the bat, the first 20 minutes of this game is gonna be fantastic. I wasn't intimidated by New England. I knew they were a good team, but defensively at that point, we were very confident. We felt like we were good enough to get the better of those guys. Los Angeles opened up with guns blazing, and in the sixth minute, Hercules Gomez fired a beautiful ball over the New England keeper and into the back of the net. The flag was up on the opposite side. For an offside, Gomez thought he had one. Gomez's called back goal seemed to only fuel their fire, and LA continued their relentless assault. Played across and two players get together. The legs tied one another up. And if you look at the papers beforehand, they were talking about Dempsey and Twelman and Noonan and just the offensive powerhouse that they were. We were ready for it. We came out there as the underdog again and made some amazing things happen. Donovan putting that ball in. Gomez with a step, the shot a bit wide. We were just going to keep going and push and push and push. Coming back the other way, Donovan, saved by Reese. New England's defense looked uninspired and their offense non-existent. Donovan brings it down. Oh, he's got a trip or two up his sleeve. New England was known for being a second half team. And after a first half heavy with fouls, the frustrated Revs stayed true to their reputation and turned up the pressure. The flex free coming through, peeps. And it's saved by Hartman. Joseph. In the second half, both sides try to shake things up with lineup changes. To the surprise of many, LA coach Steve Sampson subbed in Pondo Ramirez, the Guatemalan midfielder, who had been in a slump all season. I just asked the assistant coach from LA Galaxy why the change he said, because they'd like to get a little bit more width in the midfield, and they feel Pondo Ramirez can give that to them. I give Steve a ton of credit for throwing him in a game of that magnitude. I don't know what it was. I don't know why he decided to play him. I kind of looked over and went, oh, God, are you serious? The whistle signaled the end of regulation play and stirred up memories of the 2002 Cup when New England had fallen to L.A. in an identical overtime situation. New England still felt the sting and were looking for retribution. Riley's cross. Dempsey and Twelman are there. It goes free. Catch that shot. Shane Hartman and Samirne. Now, I know it didn't look pretty, but that's New England. And then in the 107th minute, 
Hondo Ramirez would silence his detractors with an overtime strike from the top of the box. Bowman doing a good job of coming all the way back. Landon puts it over. He's got one hand on it. Ramirez again. He scores! The underdog player from the underdog team had received vindication and emerged a hero. L.A. had achieved MLS Cup glory once again. The goal was scored by a player taken out of the starting lineup because he couldn't score goals. You feel for someone like that because he's trying so hard and he couldn't get it. I mean, it was fairy tale ending. That's it. That's it. L.A. Galaxy are the champions of MLS Cup 2005. L.A.'s turbulent regular season had become a season of destiny. This reversal of fortune and their second MLS championship would cement their standing as one of MLS's premier clubs. We had a tough season, and to come on top and to be champions in MLS, it's, it's unbelievable right now. And I'm definitely going to remember you know, Dallas you know, beating New England and New England beating New England. Won't be forgotten. Won't be forgotten at all. Congratulations. We've heard a lot about uh, people questioning this team in our heart, but uh, up here stands tonight 28 United Brothers. And this championship is a representation of our organization and our belief the best organization in Major League Soccer.